East this hour begins in West Africa, where embattled Nigeria's former central bank governor, Godwin Emefiele, has been granted bail in the sum of 50 million naira after being charged with a 26 count bordering on alleged abuse of office and irregular allocation of $4.5 billion and $2.8 billion naira, respectively. Emefiele was admitted to bail with two shorties in like sum by Justice Ramon Oshodi on Friday. Ramon Oshodi, the judge, in his ruling on the bail application on Friday, admitted Emefile on bail with two shorties in like sum. On Monday, Emefile was arraigned by the federal government alongside Henry Omole, his co-defendant. Highlighting the bail conditions, the judge said the two shorties must be gainfully employed and have three years tax payment with the Lagos state government. The judge ordered that the addresses of the two shorties must also be verified. Earlier, we are joined by a legal practitioner, Justice Ojeno, to discuss this. The government has, has done everything that it's fairly expected to do. Uh, in this case, of course, they arrested him, they brought charges against him, and the charges were was made to plead guilty promptly. And of course, the bail hearings came up and the judge who has, has done his bit by giving what I think is a, is a very, very fair bill condition, especially against uh, the backdrop of the amount or the allegations that are, that are, that are preferred against uh, the former CDM government. But if he feels that he, he can't meet the bill conditions, and that builds on him and his lawyers to actually apply to the courts to vary the conditions, but generally, I don't think the, the terms of the of the bill conditions are are onerous. Let's also tell you that the Nigeria's controversial cross dresser Idris Okuneye, also known as Bob Risky, has been sentenced to six months imprisonment without any option of fine. He pleaded guilty to allegations of abusing the Nigerian currency, which is the naira. Justice Abimbola Agwoboro of the Federal High Court Lagos in a sentence said the judgment will serve as deterrent to others who are fond of abusing and mutilating the Naira. Bob Risky has the right to appeal, but he will be spending the time while the appeal runs if he decides to. Away from that, Nigeria's crude oil production experienced a second consecutive monthly decrease reaching 1.231 million barrels per day in March. This is as reported by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, in its April 2024 monthly oil markets report. Direct communication from Nigeria revealed a decline from February's production of 1.322 million barrels per day. This represents a significant drop of 91,000 barrels per day. January saw production at 1.427 million barrels per day, but this trend did not persist into February. The decline continued into March, and OPEC's data underscores a downward trajectory in Nigeria's oil output, highlighting challenges in sustaining production levels. Now let's move to security matters, where operatives of the Plateau State Police Command in north-central Nigeria have arrested 66 persons suspected to be members of the dreaded Sarasuka cult group who have been terrorizing residents of the state. They also recovered weapons from the suspects. The state commissioner of police, Hassan Yabanet, who disclosed this while parading the suspects at the command's headquarters in Jos, said the suspects were arrested at different locations during the Salah celebration. He added that the command was working round the clock to protect the lives and property of the citizens. Exhibits recovered include 14 machetes, 8 daggers, large quantity of dry leaves suspected to be Indian hemp, 6 tricycles, 4 motorcycles and a bottle containing illicit substances. The State Commissioner of Police said all the suspects are undergoing interrogation and will be charged to court soonest. Bandits are reportedly demanding 5 million naira as ransom for the two kidnapped victims that were taken at Umogidi community in the Entekpa Council Ward of Otupo local government area of Benue, north central Nigeria. Two farmers were said to have been killed and two others were injured. Locals say the deceased 
recently fled their homes due to a similar attack but decided to go to their farms in Umogidi when they were killed on Tuesday. The other three were also set to be on their farms when the bandits attacked them and took away one of them, while the other two were reported to have been injured. Earlier, Chris Akwarandu, public affairs commentator, spoke to us on this. First of all, it's a sad incident, but we need to ask ourselves, uh, where did rain start beating us? When did we get to this point? There are some remote causes uh, that must have led to these immediate issues. Uh, of course, we know that uh, Benue has been a flashpoint. Um, you remember the Chief Jukun situations and so on and so forth, but the farmers had us clashes. But the issue is, um, do we actually think about the remote causes of these issues before uh, we begin to discuss the immediate situations? The immediate causes, of course, could be traced back to uh, the fact that we, we've never bothered about creating citizens of our country. We have hyphenated citizens. And, and, and uh, so you have a situation in which people don't think about the country. They only think about their uh, social you know, relationships, their uh, religious relationships, their tribal relationships. Okay. Now, we have also should think about the role that state creation has played. When states were created, were we thinking about cohesion? Were we uh, thinking about cultural affinity? Were we thinking about people understanding themselves? Now, three, we must also be thinking about the issue of uh, indigenous settler situations. Indigenous who accommodated settlers. Still on security, troops of Operation Safe Haven have been urged to remain resilient in their task of maintaining security of lives and property within their areas of coverage in order to consolidate on the achievements so far recorded by the command. These were the words of the theater commander, Major General Abdusalam Abubakar, during the 2024 luncheon with troops of the operation to mark the Idil Fitr celebration. Chizoba Nyongwe was there for News Central and now completes the report. This is the first time the commander of Operation Safe Haven is performing this function since assuming office in June last year. The event, among others, is to commend efforts of the troops in the discharge of their duties and also urge them to keep the flag of the Nigerian army flying, even in the face of adversity. Your professionalism, courage, and determination to achieve our mandates, especially on the plateau, is worthy of note and highly appreciated. While I acknowledge and applaud your efforts, I urge you not to rest on your oars or to remain focused in your task to consolidate the gains of all our recent achievements. For the recently fallen heroes of Operation Safe Haven while on duty in Mangu, Major General Abubakar said no stone will be left unturned in ensuring the perpetrators of the crime are all arrested. I have sworn not to rest until all those responsible are brought to justice. And thankfully, we have recovered their weapons and already arrested most of the perpetrators that are responsible. Some as far away as Bauchi. Like I always say, you can only run, you cannot hide, we will get you. In the face of daunting challenges, the commander assured continuous motivation of troops, which is paramount if there's hope for efficiency in service delivery. The commander, who is also the general officer commanding 3 Amor Division Rukuba, and other senior officers present at the event, performed the tradition of serving the troops at the luncheon, while dance troops were also in attendance to entertain guests. <laughs> In Jaws for New Central, Chizoba Anyui.
still talking on the Idil Fatur luncheon. The spirits of wounded and recuperating soldiers were lifted today as the Nigerian army celebrated Idil Fatur with a special luncheon in their honor in Maiduguri, capital of Verno State, northeast Nigeria. New Central's Umariki Rawa completes the report. A sense of gratitude filled the air at the Memalari Nigerian Army Barak Meduguri as soldiers came together to celebrate Eid al Fitr with their injured comrades. Nigeria's Chief of Army Staff, represented by the Theatre Commander Northeast Operation Hadinkai, took the opportunity to express his admiration for the soldiers' selfless sacrifice, acknowledging the hardships they have faced in service to the nation. I challenge you not to rest on your arms as we continue to work with our sister services and other security agencies in implementing strategic policies of government through successful operational activities and effective tactical actions. I urge you that I will continue to prioritize your welfare while maintaining the sanction and reward system which characterize the sound administrative pillar of my command philosophy which is to transform the Nigerian army into a well-trained, equipped, and highly motivated force towards achieving our constitutional responsibilities within the joint environment. He expressed the importance of unity and cooperation among soldiers, calling on them to remain steadfast in their commitment to safeguarding the nation and fostering peace in the region, a view corroborated by other senior officers. We want to use the opportunity to bring together all our forces, including our civilian friends and our families, to enjoy, to forget at least what has been going on in the battlefield, at least to remember that a day like this will always be for us to celebrate despite the hard times. The Nigerian army pledged to continue with its counter-terrorism efforts to promote stability in the region while calling on Nigerians to continue to pray for their continuous success. In Maiduguri for New Central, Umori Kirawa. Now some Nigerians have blamed the high cost of food items in the market for the low turnout of citizens witnessed having a fulfilled Eid Mubarak celebration. Now some of them who spoke to our correspondent in the nation's capital Abuja say the 2024 Sela celebration has been low-key as many Nigerians are battling to cater for their families in the midst of biting economic situation. Marvelous Obomanu visited one of the suburbs in Abuja and files this report. It is that time of the year when the market is filled with people buying one staple food or the other. Motor parks are usually filled with travelers visiting their families and loved ones to mark the Salah celebrations. But that has not been the case this time around. We are managing. God will help us. We are surviving. These have become the reoccurring comforting words in the lips of many Nigerians as they navigate through the tough times, hunger, poverty, in the face of depleting national resources. We are in the season of celebrating Salah, and many Nigerians are acclimatized to buying of chicken, goats, cooking of food, and sharing with their loved ones and their neighbors, while some travel, fun lovers and fun seekers converge on every entertainment point to celebrate with their family. But the sad reality is that these activities have reduced drastically, as many Nigerian families fight to provide three square meals a day. Surviving in Nigeria has now been left totally in the hands of supernatural beings, while some hope that manna will fall from heaven. The commodity in the market is so expensive that so many people cannot even afford eating three times a square meal in a day. Things, things they cost too much. Even the salad, the salad market will not sell, nobody. We know, sir, see tomato what I buy since last week. It's still there here. For this market, we go carry chicken like 500, 400, 300, and we go say all in one day for salad time. Then now, 
Now, we know, we know the bicycle like, like we go fast like 150, 200. As people, they talk same money, no they for the country. I came to this market this morning to buy a, a, a small goat or whatsoever to celebrate with my family. The goat that we used to, the equivalent of that same goat that we used to buy at the rate of uh, 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 50, 40,000. They are telling me 90,000 now. Some people blame the high cost of food to insecurity being witnessed in the country. These days, you know, farmers are no longer comfortable going to the farm because of the high, high rise in cases of kidnapping, Fulani headsmen, uh, robbery here and there, and so many of them. Although President Bola Tinubu has at several fora acknowledged that Nigerians are suffering and that the challenges will be for a short while, many will be open that he addresses the food crisis squarely to help ease the burden on citizens. In Abuja, for News Central, I am Marvelous Oboman. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. President Bola Tinubu has mourned the first civilian governor of Abia State and former Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Ogbonaya Onu. Now in a statement signed by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ajurin Galale, Tinubu described Onu as a luminous star in Nigeria's political firmament. Now Tinubu extended his condolences to the family of Onu, whom he praised for being a principal draftsman in the founding of the All Progressives Congress and a valiant partner in the victory of the party in the 2015 elections. Tinubu affirmed that Onu epitomizes Nigeria in concord and wholeness as the late statesman believed in a defended Nigeria's unity, advocated peace and promoted fellowship across the Niger. Nigeria's movie industry has again been thrown into mourning following the death of actor Junior Pope on Wednesday night after a boat mishap. National President of the Actors Guild of Nigeria, Emeka Rollers, has banned the production of movies around River Rhine areas across Nigeria until further notice. As at Thursday afternoon, the search for the three missing persons still uh, from the boat accident was still on. New Central correspondent Austin Azu brings us details. Junior Pope and some other cast and crew on a movie production he was involved in were returning to Asaba from a movie location in Anam, Anabra State, when the mishap occurred. This is obviously not the best of times for the Nigeria film industry that has witnessed a number of deaths of practitioners recently. Nollywood industry practitioners have converged on the bank of the marine waterside at Cable Point in Asaba, waiting for the divers who have gone in search of the remaining three persons involved in the accident. They are hanging on to the slim hope that they will be rescued. One of the survivors gave an account of what happened. He said he was riding in the boat with 11 others when the accident occurred. We got to the middle of the see and coincident we saw a boat and the boat was about dodging us and our own flying boat was about dodging too suddenly we are very close to the boat which is a canoe a normal canoe not a flying boat like ours we saw the canoe guy jumping inside the river just to save his own life. And I swear, our pilot was trying to divert his handle so that we could dodge the canoe, but we don't have that time, we don't have that opportunity, we don't have that, that luck to dodge it. So finally, he clamped on top of the small canoe, and that was how we all tumbled automatically inside the water. National President, Actors Guild of Nigeria, who said the unfortunate death was avoidable, advocated for adequate welfare packages and security of actors and actresses before going on set. He said the producer of the movie has been suspended from working with actors to further notice. We are praying that uh, such incident cannot occur again, more especially as the Guild has taken further step by first of all banning everything concerning filming 
near the Varine area to your further notice. Owner of the movie said efforts are on in search of the remaining bodies. What happened would have been prevented, but there is one guy there, I think they call his name TC virus or something, become so, dis so disobedient. He was standing up ringing the bell as if he was consulting something in the middle of the sea. Then even the, the pilot was asking him to sit down, I cannot see the front. He refused. He was attacking everybody that asked him to sit down. How can you cover the person driving? So the, the driver could not see the incoming boat because somebody was blocking him. The search for the remaining bodies is ongoing by the local divers and other professional divers who have gone into the river Niger in search of the bodies. Expectations are quite high that the remaining bodies will be found and thereafter be committed to Mother Earth according to the traditions of the land. In Asaba, for New Central, I'm Austin Azu. Quite a sad report there, but thank you so much, Austin, for that. Now, meanwhile, police authorities in Anambra State, Eastern Nigeria, have recovered three more bodies from a boat accident involving a movie cast. While some crew members were yet to be found following the boat tragedy, the spokesperson of the Anambra State Police Command, Tochukun Kenga, said three more bodies of members of the movie cast have been recovered. The bodies have been deposited at a morgue in Asaba Delta State, while authorities of the Guild of Actors have also been informed about the recovery. According to the state's police commissioner, Adira Miadoye, the police are fast-tracking the investigation into the accident. Now to some business stories. Nigerians across the country are voicing their concerns as they navigate a period of significant economic hardship. With inflation rates soaring and the cost of living on the rise, many are turning to financial literacy programs as a beacon of hope to guide them through these tumultuous times. Details in this report. From bustling city centers to rural communities, stories abound of citizens facing the harsh impact of economic downturns. Unprecedented hikes in prices of basic commodities, coupled with a depreciating currency, have left many Nigerians searching for strategies to cope with the financial strain. Why not? Why won't I save? I need to save. Because if I'm not save, if I'm not saving money, I'm not safe. So definitely I have to save. No matter how little I, I have to save. Because you cannot even you cannot even predict what is coming tomorrow. So if you don't save, you are in trouble. Now we say cut your uh, cloth according to what? According to your pocket. If you know those are sexist life you live, you cut it short. In this condition, present condition that we find ourselves in Nigeria, before you even get the money, the expenses is already down. So it's people find it so so difficult to save. But uh, out of the hard economy. I think some people still do follow, but for us like this, uh, no save <laughs> because before the money arrives, that's all, we don't spend it, spend it, spend it. House expenses, house rent, uh, this, that, mommy, daddy, paying this. The current economic climate in Nigeria has prompted a nationwide conversation about the importance of financial literacy. As families and individuals grapple with the realities of stretched budgets and dwindling savings, there is a growing recognition of the need for a better understanding of financial planning and management. In response to the outcry, non-governmental organizations, financial institutions and community groups have begun ramping up efforts to provide educational resources and workshops on budgeting, saving and investing. What is building the other advanced economy that we are going through? There are the small, small businesses. But all those small businesses are not built by government or by large corporations. Mm -hmm. It's by individuals that start putting stuff together. But we don't have that knowledge. So everybody go to school, end up out of school and looking for employment. But when you teach people how to save and invest, then it helps them that by the time they're out of school, they're able to you know, think out of the box. On its part, the Nigerian government has made efforts to promote financial education as the CBN implements financial literacy programs. Despite these efforts, there's still a long road ahead. Access to financial literacy resources remains uneven, particularly in remote areas where information 
and education are not readily available. To a large extent, it's not evenly shared. There are a lot of drivers to you getting that financial literacy, quote and unquote. It has to do with access to internet, which is not even evenly shared in the country. The internet penetration in Nigeria is quite low. So for places where we have high internet penetration, you get to the access to information is quite easy, quite accessible compared to areas where the internet penetration is quite low. So if you are not financially literate to know who oh, this is what to do to invest. If you don't take that discipline, that could definitely you will always be under the water. And that's why I say we are not doing as the government, as the people, as individuals, we are not doing more than enough to ensure that we breach this financial literacy gap. The crisis has shed light on the fundamental role that financial knowledge plays in navigating economic challenges. As the nation looks forward, the focus on financial education not only offers hope for individual financial health, but also for the nation's economic recovery and growth. Now in southern part of the continent, the South African Independence Electoral Commission has approached the Apex Court of South Africa for clarity on Section 47 of the Constitution following a court order by the Electoral Court that set aside its decision to let former president and leader of Mkuntowe Sizwe party, Jacob Zuma, to contest the upcoming elections. According to Section 47 of the Constitution, a candidate cannot be elected if they have been convicted. Previously, Jacob Zuma was convicted and served not more than two months in jail. In its statement, the Commission says its decision for an urgent appeal to the Constitutional Court is to get clarity on this matter from the highest court. The IEC Chief Electoral Officer, Sai Mamabolo, speaks more on this. Uh, it has lost uh, papers on an urgent uh, basis directly to the Constitutional Court to appeal the orders of the Concord uh, relating to the MK matter um, regarding the erstwhile uh, president's uh, candidature. The basis of the appeal is to obtain clarity on the correct legal interpretation of Section 147 1E of the Constitution, so that there is absolute clarity for all role players and that there is legal certainty, so that the Commission is placed in a position for purposes of this election, but as well as for the future, to ensure that we apply that provision of the Constitution evenly across all role players. And we wish to take uh, the moment to emphasize that by taking this decision, the Commission is not intending to enter into the political playing field, rather to uh, obtain clarity from the highest court in the land which court has um, constitutional meta jurisdiction. We now head to the east of the continent, where the United States pleaded Thursday for the world to care more about Sudan nearly a year into its brutal war and voiced hope for a resumption soon of peace talks. According to the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas Greenfield, as communities barrel towards famine, as cholera and measles spread and as violence continues to claim countless lives, the world has largely remained silent. She called for change that must happen now. The U.S. ambassador adds that the international community must give more and it must do more and it has to care more. A long-running rift between Sudan's army and the paramilitary rapid support forces erupted into an all-out war on April 15, 2023, leaving thousands dead, displacing millions and severely derailing a fragile transition to civilian rule. Now is not the time. In Central Africa, Gabon's transitional president has asked his Ivory Coast counterpart for help in getting African Union sanctions lifted during a meeting in Abidjan. General Bryce Oligui Nguema, who came to power in a coup last August, met Ivory Coast President Alassane Ouattara during a visit to the country for work and friendship from Thursday to Saturday. According to the general, he is asking for the support of his elder to plead in favor of lifting of the African Union sanctions against Gabon. 
Gabon was suspended from the African Union on August 31st after Nguema overthrew President Ali Bongo, whose family had been in power for 55 years. He pledged to hand back the oil-rich Central African country to civilian rule after a two-year transitional period.